Hi everyone, today I want to talk about the news, a little bit of a portfolio update, and then let's talk about what I've been buying. So first up, we'll talk about where people have been spending their stimulus money, then I'm going to cover a little bit of REIT analysis, then I'm going to go over my portfolio and what I've been buying in that portfolio. As always, there will be a little bit of jelly at the end, which is something I enjoyed outside of the markets. Normally, this is where I say, if you're interested in buying this expensive, nice thing, go ahead and like and subscribe. However, this is the History Supreme yacht, and it recently sold for $4.8 billion. So that's billion with a B. So, yeah, I can't actually help you with that, but the reason that it is so expensive is the entire thing is covered in platinum and gold from bow to stern. That includes the base of the boat, the deck, the dining area, the the rails, and the anchor. Just take a look at what this looks like on the inside, just for the sake of entertainment. Anyway, go ahead and like and subscribe. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So some economists wanted to know how Americans were spending their stimulus checks. So let's take a look at what they think we've been buying. So it says here, during the Great Recession, most people spent their stimulus checks on durable goods. It says here, economists assumed that people would spend their money on similar things to the Great Recession in 2008. However, it appears that people are spending their money on catching up with their bills, paying their rent, and feeding their families. So then this article goes into a timeline of what the spending looked like. Let's hit some of these highlights. In the first few days, most people bought $50 to $75 worth of non-durable goods, things like laundry detergent and pens. If people had less than $500 in their account, they spent almost half of the money within the first 10 days. If they had over $3,000 in their account, they didn't spend nearly any of the check. According to the data in February and March, 40% of people lost their jobs if they were making less than $40,000 per year. And the reason that all of this is relevant is these stimulus checks seem to be more urgent now than they were in the 2008 crisis. It seems like the money is getting used for a little bit more essential needs versus nice-to-haves, like replacing kitchen appliances. And since people are spending their money on things that are considered more essential, REITs like Realty Income Corp., and Federal Realty are still really cheap right now. If you've watched my channel at all so far, you know that I am a fan of Realty Income Corp. They are one of the best REITs available right now, and they are still pretty cheap. I am adding to my position pretty consistently. And let's see why exactly they're so cheap. So it says here, Realty Income Corp has a low risk approach to real estate. Their revenue comes from the difference between its financing costs and the rental charges. And this REIT is also one of the biggest REITs available with over 6,500 properties in the U.S. and the United Kingdom. Despite what's going on right now, Realty Income Corp. has paid its dividend consistently for the last 27 years. They pay that dividend monthly, and currently the dividend is yielding about 5.1%. It goes on to say that Realty Income Corp. usually trades at a premium price compared to its peers, but is relatively cheap compared to its history. And I do agree. I will show you the chart to prove that. It then goes on to say that Realty Income Corp. is still modestly leveraged with a debt to equity ratio below 0.5. It says here you can find higher yielding REITs. However, there's going to be more risk with those REITs. Realty Income Corp. has been very consistent and is a dividend aristocrat. Moving on to Federal Realty. It says it currently has a streak of 52 annual dividend hikes behind it. So every year they increase their dividend. Currently, the dividend is 5.3%, and it hasn't been that high since the 2008-2009 recession. Again, I'm going to show you the chart to prove that. So the risk here with Federal Realty is that they mostly own open-air shopping centers, and with the little situation we have going on right now, those centers are closed, and we don't know exactly what the traffic in those kind of centers is going to be even once the economy opens. So due to that fear, Federal Realty is pretty cheap. Moving on to their leverage chart, you can see here Realty Income Corp, like they mentioned, is still below a 0.5. However, Federal Realty does have a little bit higher leverage here because of the situation going on. They were doing great right around a 0.3, but because of this situation, they have raised their debt to equity levels. 
Just to expand on Federal Realty's portfolio, they have 35% mixed-use assets and around 2,700 apartment-like units. It goes on to say here, both of these REITs don't increase their dividend extremely fast. However, they are very consistent. They are resilient in tough times and historically have a high yield. All right, let's look at Realty Income Court first. Currently, the price is $49.99 for a share. And prior to this whole cough situation, shares were trading up around $82.44. So we're talking about a pretty substantial drop from the highs. And the last time that you could buy shares at $49.99 in April of 2018. Then it had this pretty massive bull run. And then we had the cough situation. So unless you believe that Realty Income Corp is going to go out of business... There's quite a bit of upside here for this company, in my opinion, in the long term. Federal Realty is not quite as cheap off of its highs as Realty Income Corp. Current price is $72.02. Did actually come down a little bit prior to February. So it was at $129 in February. Its most recent highs was $139. But again, to illustrate the point, the last time that you could buy these shares for $72 was way back here in July of 2010. All right, let's take a look at my portfolio. This is my higher yield savings portfolio. It is down a little bit by percentage from the last time that I took a look at this portfolio. The major changes I've made in the last two weeks here is I dropped this midterm bond section and bank balance section down by 1% each. If you're curious what those are, take a look at my savings plan for maximum growth video, which I will link in the description. I have left this bond position at 9% for now. And I put one additional percentage point here into realty income, and then one additional point into the VIG. So as shares continue to come down, I'm going to continue to average into the market. And we had that pretty significant drop. The S&P 500 got into the 2700s again for the first time in a little while. And when it dipped down there, I did put in some additional money. You can see here, I'm pretty consistently buying. I've been buying all through the month. When I see dips, I put in a little bit more money. When the market's up a little bit, I put in a little less money. Looking at dividends here, I get dividends just about every day at this point. Realty income paid today. And that was a $5 dividend. Then it looks like the rest of these are bond ETFs. I did want to highlight here, I did sell some bonds and move them over to equities. And that's because the bond market, I feel, is a little overpriced right now because of all of the Fed buying. And I have moved a small percentage of those bonds over into the equity market. To highlight what I've been buying in this portfolio, the VIG is currently the most undervalued in this portfolio right now. So I have been putting money into the VIG. However, Realty Income Corp was down around 10% prior to my buying this month. So that's come up quite a bit as well. Those are the two main things I've been buying. And then some of these other ETFs down here, IDV, DGRO, VYM, and VTV have all been getting some buys as well. You can see here, they're mostly undervalued right now. DGRO is currently overvalued. A little bit, but I'm okay with that because buying shares in the equity market right now is my current strategy. So to summarize, stimulus money is getting spent on essential needs. And the fact that stimulus money is getting spent on essential needs is evidence that these realty companies may be facing some hard times. Both of these companies own commercial properties and some of these tenants in these commercial properties may struggle to pay rent for the next few months while their businesses are shut down. And if the shutdown causes these businesses to go out of business, then these companies are going to have to find new tenants to fill those slots, and that could potentially reduce their income in the near future. However, I don't believe that this situation is going to be permanent. I believe those properties will be filled up and that these companies will make it through this situation, and they will be able to reattain their highs at some point in the future. Moving on to my portfolio update, I did sell some bonds and reduce my bond targets. I did increase my VIG allocation as well as my realty income allocation, which leads to what I've been buying. I've been buying both of those as well as IDV, VYM, and VTV. Of course, this is not financial advice, and 
You should always consult your financial advisor before making any decisions. This is for entertainment purposes. And with that, let's get to today's jelly. So today's jelly is a new song out by Matt Best. He's a prior service guy who owns a coffee and whiskey business. And he's pretty talented in terms of making funny songs. And he's put out quite a few songs, but here's his latest one, and it's about coffee. It's you get to pick the genre of music and the topic. Today's topic is something I am very not pleased to be having to make, but we're just going to do it. You see, the thing with rap videos is you don't really care about the lyrics. You just write words on a paper, come up with a cool beat, and then put all the money into the production budget to make you look like you're rich and famous. So that was Matt Best's latest song. I always like his music because it's always got an undertone of humor to it, but really the quality on it is pretty good. And he has a lot of other videos that are very similar. It's a little bit deeper than just a comedy video and also has that really good quality to the music as well as the editing. If you want to see the whole video, it will be linked in the description. Of course, this video is only for entertainment purposes. Please consult your financial advisor before making any decisions. And with that, if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and like and subscribe and have a great day.